Hello, I'm Zash, and welcome to episode 30 of my Jisenjo no Mao, or the Devil on G-String, Let's Read. Joining me, as always, is my co-reader Faith. We've wrapped up the Sabaki chapter, and it looks like Mao is coming after Cannon next. What will we ever do? It's not that she's a spoiled brat that neither of us like or anything. But that aside, Mao is kind of trying to screw her over. Rush her out of the uh, Olympics. But what will his plan hold for our dear little can? <clears throat> okay, can't say that with a straight face. But what machinations does Mao have in plan for canon? We shall find out in this episode. Please enjoy. In the evening, the red and black horizon was diced to pieces by the square and triangle shapes of rooftops. Nisa, why did you skip school today? And what are you doing out here yourself? At my return from the Azai Corporation's Central Boulevard office, I suddenly met Cannon in front of my apartment building. What about practice? Isn't there a big tournament coming up? I'm going right now. I'm taking you with me. What? I have to go too? Yeah, you have to come watch once in a while. Oh, but how could I ever disturb your practice? Just come. D don't grab my arm. Just come, just come. Hey, don't hug me like that. This is a Russian greeting. You're loud, and the neighbors can see us. You're just a regular loner, aren't you? I'm just not an attention whore like you. Ooh. What? Don't what me. If you get shot by the paparazzi at a place like this, there'll be hell to pay. Really? I never had a single picture taken of my private life. Because probably Gonzo would shoot anyone who would try. Yes, you did! No, I didn't. Ah. Now that I think about it, Gonzo took some people and beat up the editors before it printed. The matter was settled cleanly. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Never mind. You're weird. All right, I'm leaving. If you don't come with me, then I'm going to cling to you harder next time. Hey. All right, all right, fine, I'll go. I managed to nod. Ah, oh, I forgot. Paparin said he'd come too. Well, this just got immediately ten times more terrifying. Oh, yay. Oh, seriously? I think he said he wanted to talk to you. Okay, we are now at a hundred times more terrifying. Oh, no! Idiot! Why didn't you say so in the first place? We walked to the arena together. To be fair, I can see why Kyosuke would go for Tsubaki. That kind of opposites attract thing. Yeah. I don't see why he'd go for Ganon. Yeah. Or anyone else, to be honest. Well, Usami and Kyosuke have the whole, uh, rivals thing no, I mean, going on. Besides Usami, like, Usami and Tsubaki I get. Yeah. The others I, I'm not so clear on. Yeah. Bye! We'll eat together during break, okay? Though with Canon, I could see her taking a more active role in it. Like, she'll be the initiator. Maybe, but it still doesn't explain why he'd accept. Because uh, Gonzo will kill him if he doesn't? Yeah, but that is not a good relationship. <laughs> Where's the good ending here? I could understand a bad one because Gonzo has told him to form a relationship with her. Gonzo has literally told him to fuck her. Yeah, so I, I get how it would happen, like, uh, objective-wise, but not as a yeah. good thing. Mm. Maybe that's just... I don't see... The, mm, makes no sense. Maybe they'll expand on it. Sure. Cannon walked away lightly, showing off her pair of long legs. I found the spectator's entrance and walked into the giant structure. And at that moment... Hello. What the fuck, man? Pretty cold today, huh? Then wear a coat, for God's sake. 
And would you stop popping up so casually? I'm off work today. That's great. Now why don't you run off somewhere and play? By the way, as I sung, why didn't you show up at school today? Are you even trying to have a conversation with me? Oh, so it's something about your job. I see. Ellipses. Are you angry? I sighed heavily and exaggeratedly clicked my tongue. To tell the truth, I don't know why I'm here either. Amnesia? Nah, but why is it that every time there's a girl who loses her memory, she's a kind, beautiful girl with white skin tragically bound to her hospital bed? Kind, beautiful girls obviously get more of a reaction from the audience when they die. It makes the story more dramatic, more of a tearjerker. But more importantly, you should hurry up and go somewhere else. Sorry, I'm afraid that's not an option. Now come on, let's go. Usami turned her back to me and walked into the facility. Hey! At times like this, right before a big event, normal spectators shouldn't be able to enter. There were many skaters already practicing on the ice. Quite a few of them were decked out in their competition outfits, so the rink looked like it had been scattered with flowers. Wow, it's huge. Usami got inside successfully. What would happen if someone put a bomb in the stadium? How, how did you get in? Eh, it didn't take much. I just explained a few things at the reception desk. What things? As I was questioning her, a sound boomed over us from the seats above. Eep. <coughs> that I called her here. Turning my head, I saw the familiar sight of the certain thug. He was accompanied by one of the family. A bodyguard whose name, I think, was Ijima. Are you Usami Haru? Oopsies. Hey, you get to talk to him for once. Yay! I'm thrilled. At least it's not canon talking to him. I don't know why, but Usami's face was as expressionless as a blank mask. She gave a single slow nod. Father, just... What is... Why? Why would Gonzo call Usami out here? Not long ago, a sealed letter was sent to my estate. Gonzo's piercing stare was directed at Usami. The contents said this. If and when Azai Cannon is chosen to represent Japan, I will kill Cannon's mother. Oh dear. For an instant, I couldn't breathe. Is that a threat? Gonzo didn't answer my question. But don't you get letters like that frequently? Because Cannon is so popular, both fan letters and such anonymous messages sent by people with mental problems are so common as to be expected these days. Silence, Kyosuke. A glare from him made me feel as if my body had cramped up. Gonzo only brings this kind of attitude down on me when I've made a mistake. My gears immediately begin to turn. I'm sorry. It was sent to your residence. If you think about it, that part is suspicious. Why was it addressed to her father's home instead of an organization officially associated with Canon? And why was Usami called here? The sender was Mao. You get me, Usami? Ellipses. Usami didn't say a word. She just nodded silently. Tell me what you know of our man, Mao. Ellipses. What? According to Kiyosuke, you and Mao have a very special connection. Ellipses. She kept her silence. Still. With that face utterly devoid of emotion, she stared back at Gonzo's glare without blinking. Hey. Oopsies. Does your mouth work, girl? The thug standing beside Gonzo took a step forward. Gonzo stopped him with his hand. Aren't you chasing Mal? Oopsies. Get moving. Tell me when you find anything. Ellipses. 
Got it. Throwing behind that sentence, Gonzo turned around and left. The bodyguard also left, following him. Hey, you saw me? When Gonzo left, the arena came alive again. The sound of the coach's yells and the sound of blades cutting into the ice finally managed to reach my ears. Christ, just what is going on? Not only has Gazo's existence been exposed to Asami, but Mao's at it again? And this time, it's a threat to Cannon. What the hell is this man's goal? Asami, why are you just standing there staring vacantly? Duh. If she comes back and goes, Huh, what? Sorry, I was thinking about penguins or something like that. She just might, she just might wake up and... She just might wake up. Holy shit, your dad's friggin' scary. Hey, come on now. Tell me a little about what you're thinking. Ellipses. She gave a quick, quiet moan. No. What? And following that, she screamed. Ah, I was almost scared to death. Huh? I was shocked stiff. That was so scary. Ah, uh, too scary. What? What? Would you calm down? No, 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 As I said, you don't get it. Her rounded eyes emphasized her own stupefaction. Just who the hell was that guy, huh? Didn't you hear me call him father? Are you shitting me? But, but, that, that's the real deal, ain't it? The real deal, Yakuza Mobile? She kept repeating a motion of cutting her thumb across her cheek. For the last time, that was my father. Wait. Don't you call him Popperin or something? Yeah. Popperin, my ass. There's no way that's a damn Popperin. No matter how you want to look at it, that thing goes by boss. That's true. Could it be that the reason she didn't speak was because she was scared? Whoa. I barely made it up by pretending to be dead. That was way too dangerous. That man has definitely killed someone before. So... You're scared after all. As if. Heroes are people with courage. Even a real deal Yakuza boss isn't enough to scare me. Feeling a headache coming on, I spoke to Usami. Look, did you hear everything through that stupor of fear? Um, I think so. Well, what do you think? Like I said, I was just wondering why girls with memory loss are always beautiful. Sounds like you've got a case of it yourself. Huh? Mao! Mao is on the move again! That is absolutely no laughing matter. Please tell me the details. <sighs> is this girl really alright? No. No, she's not. <laughs> We continued our conversation while the skaters practiced with devotion in the corners of our eyes. Now that we're on the subject, when I left school today, a teacher called me over and told me that your father asked me to come here. Isn't that mysterious? Gonzo tends to be sudden. So he's called Gonzo-san. He's getting further and further away from Paparin. Don't tell anyone. One dream of it. If I did, I'd be on my way to the bottom of Tokyo Bay. I'm pretty sure no one does that concrete shoes thing anymore. And about Mao? Yeah, we really don't know anything right now. She said it. Straight to the point. I suppose we can say Mao must be someone who knows about Hanzo sans estate. That's too broad. Even if we ignore people in the organization, Anyone who's ever contacted him would come under suspicion. Yep, but it means I'm not Mao. We all knew you weren't. Taking it a step further, he's someone who knows about the relationship between Gonzo-san and Cannon, and bringing Cannon down will somehow benefit him. That means I'm not Mao. Really? Seeing as how you already heard so much, I'll tell you. Cannon's organization is founded by a company I'm affiliated with. So that's what the Azai Corporation is? A so-called front company? A shell company that the mob uses to launder money and escape the law? Well, actually, the one dishing out the money isn't the Azai Corporation, 
but another company Gonzo owns. But that's neither here nor there. You understand that I'm not Mao now, right? Sure. If Canon loses, you lose revenue. Not to mention the implied humiliation. You wouldn't just be threatening your sister, you'd even be killing your own mother. There should be a limit to how much of a bastard the guy is. Yeah. There seems to be a misunderstanding. Um, well, about mother. Uh, so she's not your real mother? How did you know? I didn't. Didn't Gonzo just say the letter claimed that Cannon's mother would be killed? I nodded, urging her to go on. To say he'd kill Cannon's mother is a strange thing for Mal to say. I see. If the letter was intended to be addressed to Gonzo, wouldn't it say, I will kill your wife? Along this vein, if we assume your wife is an invalid claim, then that implies Cannon's mother and Gonzo's wife are not equivalent. A mother, but not a wife, so just what's... Alright, alright. I'll tell you. She was his lover once, a long time ago. Is Cannon an illegitimate child? She was born during their relationship, but they were never married. By the way, I'm the adopted son. To tell you the truth, you two are nothing like Gonzo. But Cannon and Gonzo are related by blood. Meh, I guess it just goes to show you that the powers that be designed all of us girls to be cute. I don't necessarily... That's enough. Returning to my last point, I reminded her once again. Look, you can't tell a soul. Cannon doesn't know that she's a concubine's child. I get your drift. If I spill the beans, Tokyo Bay is going to turn into a sea of blood. She shook, pretending to be scared. So... What's the mother doing now? Her name's Ikuko-san, and I'm not very good at dealing with her. Oh? It's canon. Suddenly, Usami waved to something behind me. Hey, Nissan! Because she was waving, I also held up my hand for a bit. Huh? Usaman's here with you? Yep, I'm a penguin after all. I love the ice. While telling the joke, Usami's gaze turned to the person standing beside Kanan. Hello, good evening. A calm smile. It's been a long time. How are you, Kyosuke kun Fine. I see you're still doing well. She lowered her head clumsily. How's Kanan's condition? After I asked, there was an incomprehensible pause. She finally turned to Kanan. Uh, how is it, Kanan chen She's shorter than her daughter. Her daughter's already so short. Gonzo was giant, so... And also Cannon's on skates right now. I don't think the sprite's height changes. Though, to be fair, very rarely do children match parents' heights. Why'd you ask me? Shouldn't you be judging my condition from your perspective as a coach? Again, there was a pause long enough to take a big breath in and out. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Her eyes wandered to the corner of her vision as she smiled. She seemed troubled. I'm in perfect condition right now, Nisa. Unexpectedly, Cannon salvaged the conversation. That's right, Cannon Chan. What? I'm saying you're in good condition. Yeah. So she says, Kyosukeko. Ah, yes. It's hard for me to get used to Ikoku's son's rhythm. More importantly, why don't we talk about dinner? And the conversation was scattered again by this girl's trademark absurdity. Yeah, I'm hungry. Let's eat on the terrace. Chan Chan, there's more jump practice at seven. Oh, again? I want to do it with the music. Really? She zoned out for a moment and pulled herself back together a moment later. Because Mr. Hilton said so. I see. Then I'll do it. Please do. Yeah, I know. Kenan was driven to an expression of exhaustion. Bye, Kyosuke kun. Kenan's lonely, so come and visit the house once in a while. I know, I'm sorry. I've just been really busy recently. I haven't had a chance to. You should take a breather every once in a while. 
Oh, what am I saying? It's not like I'm your mother or anything. Of course you aren't. The words that were prying out of my mouth were swallowed back at the last moment. Well, take care. That woman and I are on separate planets or something. I have no idea how to deal with her. Just now, for instance, she put her foot straight into her mouth and then didn't even have the decency to realize it. Hey, Nissan, buy me dinner. Sure. Huh? You're really gonna treat me? That's so rare. Wow, as I said, I really appreciate it. I suppose that's what I get for answering while zoned out. But Usami somehow ended up standing in front of me, waving her arms around like a sea anemone. It's a loan for you. By the time the three of us had finished eating, night had consumed everything around us. Cannon has to practice until that late. Wow, she works so hard. Olympic athletes. They, they don't play. I think strength training and running starts at 9. Really? I know she had to work out off the ice, too. There's some hard work lurking behind that casual exterior of hers. Can't believe Mal would try to bring down such a hard-working girl. Jeez, what a despicable person. Yeah. As Usami walked beside me, I could only just glimpse her eyes through that hair. I'm going to catch him, no matter what. You mean, you're going to stick your nose into things again? We can't involve the police in this, isn't that right? Hmm. No, we probably can't. Mao's letter was sent to Gonzo's home. Gonzo has undoubtedly taken it as a challenge. He probably wants to personally make an example out of him to show what happens when one crosses Zai Gonzo. But discipline and personal goals aside, Gonzo-san told me to get moving. Better act soon, or it'll be Tokyo Bay. Nah, I don't think Gonzo is expecting anything in particular. I realize that. I suspect he's just taking advantage of the situation by taking someone he believes to have a connection to Mao and just letting them loose to see if anything comes of it. Yeah, that sounds about right. And just as in Tsubaki's kidnapping case, we're again stuck without any help from the police. Usami's face stiffened. I'm thinking that Mao might be asking me to play again. Only he won't be getting off as easy this time. Yeah. I'm going to regain my honor. No, forget about you. Mao just made every last man under Gonzo's command his enemy. That's way more important than the police. You're very confident, Azasa. Wouldn't you be? Didn't you see the guy? And you're not? I don't know. She lifted her head and played with the long bangs. Hmm. In any case, let's go see Gonzo-san tomorrow. Why? I need to ask some specific questions about the circumstances surrounding the letter's delivery. Try not to be scared into submission again. I think I have enough fortitude. Please come with me, Hazelson. If I go alone, I'll feel like a frog being stared down by a snake. Alright, I will. See you later. After saying goodbye to Usami, I left the area. She's going to be camping on our doorstep in the morning, isn't she? That is more likely than I was about to say. Hey, why are you still following me? Well, I was close to here. You're kidding! I couldn't help but scream in the calm residential area. Where do you live? Okay, you know how if you keep walking, there's this alley, right? Yeah. If you go through there, there's a convenience store, right? There is. Just ignore the store for now. Then what the hell are you talking about? Before the alley, there's a traffic light, and then you go here and there. Forget the here and there. You just don't want to tell me where it is, do you? I'm living a life befitting a human, don't worry. She bowed gently, 
her hair swaying like reeds in a riverbed. I keep getting the feeling that you're following me. Yeah, I know what you mean. Wanting to be with you is on my mind a lot too, as I said. That's nauseating. Are you coming to school tomorrow? Yeah. Oh yeah, the reason you skip so often is to help gonzo san isn't that right? I can understand why you put priority on that. Don't tell anyone. I won't, I promise. I know how much you hate attention, as I said. Oh, shut up. We talked while walking, and I ended up in front of my apartment before I knew it. I'm going to come here and bother you next time. There's no need. Don't be modest now, I have to demonstrate my special skill. What skill? Meditation. Do you think watching you meditate would be particularly entertaining to me? Yeah, because I can hop while doing it. Please, God no. That's disgusting. I hear you're really into classical music. I'm sure that I can satisfy you. Good for you. Now get the hell out. Sure. Have a good one. I ignored her and walked in the door. My head churns when I speak with Usami. It's probably for the best if I don't take her seriously. After washing up, I let myself sink into my bed. As I heave a sigh and tried to collect my thoughts about the day's happenings, the sound that warns me of guests rang once more. Usami again? I yelled into the speaker. You're pretty fucking persistent, you know that? Oh. <laughs> eh. I I'm sorry. Sabaki was quivering on the intercom screen. Oh, I'm um, sorry, Sabaki. Oh. Um, are you busy? Not really. What happened? Nothing. I'm just here to say hello. Why do you always pop up at this time of night? Like... <laughs> Probably because all her siblings are asleep. Hello? Then it hit me. Did you finish moving? Thanks to your help. Her honest eyes were too much for me. I couldn't help but turn away. I see. Anyway, come on up. I pressed the door button and let her in. Sorry for disturbing you at this time of night. She was holding out a wrapped square package. You didn't have to do this. Moving would have been such a hassle if we didn't have your help, Kyosuke kun The house you found us was miraculously cheap for this area. Yeah, it was. You should come over sometime. Sure. I nodded ambiguously. For some reason, I had the feeling that I would never visit her house. The man who had chased them from their home was none other than me. I wasn't so weak as to feel shame, but I wasn't exactly thick-skinned enough to act all buddy-buddy after the fact, either. Sabaki is a stranger. Just another woman without money. So, uh, how's your job? You don't have to help anymore. Thank you for the gift. I spoke coldly. Well then, good night. Sabaki seemed to have sensed that my voice was somehow different at the moment. Hey, Sabaki. Before she reached the door, I called out to her. I stood there, speechless for a moment. If you ever get bothered by financial problems, come and talk to me. Meaningless words. Words that could neither comfort another nor satisfy myself. Thank you, Zaku. I could only stare vacantly at her receding silhouette. A missed opportunity. A missed opportunity for happiness. I'm getting dizzy again. A nauseating storm is brewing in my head. I don't know why, but my headache is attacking me with its usual ferocity, as if following some predefined pattern. When I feel pity or sympathy, my heart cries out like this. I'll get to work. Mumbling to myself, with unsteady feet, I locked myself in the study. That night, half-conscious, I sat outside into the darkness like a sleepwalker.
due in part to the winter chill, my body was stiff as a rock, as if it refused to move. It's so cold. Yeah, if you hadn't come to get me today, I probably would have skipped for sure. Jesus, bro. How have you made it this far without failing a year? Yeah. And why are you even here, Aichi? He had one hand on Cannon's shoulder, and their height difference was making him panic a little. Look, I'm Cannon Chan's private coach. Hold it right there. It's too early for your stupid antics. Cannon Chan's already agreed to it. Yes, coach. Aichi puffed out his chest and stuck his chin up in the air when Cannon called him coach. How did this happen? Achen called me yesterday, and it turns out he knows a whole lot. About what? Figure skating! There are three topics I'll never lose a trivia contest about. Pets, figure skating, and romancing of the three kingdoms. Hmm. So, what I gather from this is that those two talk on the phone regularly. We are going to work together now. Our goal is the Olympics. Good, let them have each other. Yep, yep. Ken and Chen, when you're at school, listen to my instructions, okay? Yes, coach. Alrighty then, carry my bag for me. Don't wanna. Falling apart from the start, huh? <laughs> She'd be good for him to screw up all his little plans. Cannon Chan, you can't sleep all the time. Yichi continued his lecture. What if you end up knowing nothing but how to skate? Then I'll just get a gold medal and be a professional skater for the rest of my life. Huh, but that can't happen without an education. Figure skating is a sport of the mind, right? You have to cultivate your humanity in order to put on a performance that will captivate an audience. But... Nanchen's test scores are a lot better than Achen's. Apples and oranges. I am a man. You're a man? Men are like kites without strings. That's why we cause women so much worry. How is that making us worry? Like, kites without strings, alright. Hey, look at that stupid thing up there. <laughs> I don't understand that comparison. Oh, look, there's something flapping up there. Oh, it's stuck in the tree. Oh, well. Ichi seems to be waxing poetic. Oh, I get it. I'm glad you do. Really? Yep. Good night. Like every morning, Cannon was laying motionless on her desk. That's what he said. <laughs> Fine, you damn. Ichi glared at me with furious indignation. What the hell does the little bitch want, huh? She's your sister, right? Well, you gotta hand it to her. She's pretty damn good at disregarding other people's advice. She isn't in juniors anymore, and Japan's at a disadvantage. The bitch is gonna find herself up shit creek without a paddle if I don't step in and take care of things. Oh, please. Kenan's mother's her coach. What? What did I tell you about putting your face so close to mine? Kenasaki Ikoku stopped coaching a long time ago. Huh? What are you talking about? The name of Cannon's coach is George Hilton. Hmm? Really? My memory may be fragmented, but I'll be damned if Cannon wasn't getting a lot of attention recently because of the rarity of having her mother coach her. Jesus, man. Your brain sounds more shattered than fragmented. This past season, the International Skating Union sent out a formal request and finally got Hilton to be Cannon's coach. Wait, but doesn't Cannon call Ikuko-san? Erm, doesn't she call Mama coach? Eiichi sighed contemptuously. Listen, take this data and copy it into that brain of yours. Once you get around to defragging it. Uh, all right. Under the union's orders, talented skaters like Cannon switch over to accomplished overseas coaches according to their personal situation. 
Oh, is that what happens? But she's been taking care of Kanan since she was little, right? Kanan has a bond with Kanasaki Ikoko, and there's that whole love thing, too. I get it, I get it. She's no longer her coach, but they can't just up and get rid of her. Wow, Ikoko sure has it hard. Her job was suddenly stolen from her. Is there a financial reason behind this? Well, I suppose it doesn't matter. Is this George Washington guy all he's cracked up to be? Weak, man. You said that wrong on purpose, didn't you? You little shit. Shut up. Hilton isn't your average joker. When he was still skating, he went to the Olympics twice and ended up on the podium both times. Forty years ago, he got the gold at the World Figure Skating Championships and got a silver the year later. After he retired, he cultivated one famous skater after another. Ah, I get it, I get it. He's amazing, etc, etc. Weak, man! May she relax. Anyway, if Cannon's under this guy's wing, everything should be fine, right? Pretty much. Then, aren't you completely useless? That's no big deal. You're the one we should be worried about. Me? Aichi pointed at a spot between my eyes. Why won't you show some interest in these things? There's a chance your sister might go to the Olympics, you know? I am interested. Normal family members would be rapidly supporting them. Like, it's fine if their daughter doesn't go to school, if she has to go to the Olympics. Some people even show their support by constantly arguing with the coaches. Seriously, man, I am interested. Who doesn't like watching pretty girls' figures skate around the ice? <laughs> Ellipses. Ellipses. We ka I know, I know. The Grand Prix of figure skating is more about the prize money than about the title. That's why winning it doesn't really prove you're the best in the world. Some skaters just abstain. Ichi's lecture continued straight through to noon. I see. And the next two tournaments on Cannon's list are the NHK Trophy and the Finals, which are part of that Grand Prix series. For some reason, Usami had enrolled in our studies. And then, at the end of the year, they hold the Japan Championship to determine the best in Japan. But aren't the World Figure Skating Championships in March next year? Why the big time gap? Things go down differently in America and the rest of the world. Though, I agree, doing it this way may lead to our players going rusty. Eiichi acted irritated, as if the problem was his. Well, I'll ask you again. If you want to enter the World Figure Skating Championships, you have to win the Japan Kit Championships, right? That does seem to be the general consensus this year. So, does that mean it doesn't matter if she wins the Grand Prix Finals? Like I said yesterday, that's a gray area. Like, they'll keep it in mind. And that means... If I recall correctly, if the second place skater was within 10% of the winner's score, then they take the results of these finals into account. Does that happen fairly often? Yeah, of course. Many competitions are decided by narrow margins. Is that so? In ladies' figure skating, if you add the short program and the free skate together, 200 points is an orgasmic performance. I see. So unless you're ahead of the other skater by more than 20 points, your seat at Worlds isn't guaranteed. I finally understood the reason Usami was nodding so much. If she won in the finals, Ma would be pretty upset. But if you think about it, everything's still so vague. I know, right? Pretty shady if you ask me. Even if Cannon wins the Japan Championship, if she loses the finals, 
she might not be able to go to Worlds unless she wins by a huge margin. So, are there any strong competitors other than Cannon? Hmm. He folded his arms, posing in an uncharacteristic manner. Seda Makiko's doing really well this year. Oh? How good is this girl? Well, if Cannon's war stat was 90, Seda's would be an 85. So going head to head would be dangerous. But if we took popularity into account, then Cannon's lead stat would be 1500, and Seda's would be around 5. Isn't that an overwhelming advantage for our forces? Oh, but popularity is a fickle thing, isn't it? And Seda's absurdly cute, too. She just hasn't caught the public eye yet, probably as a result of her inexplicable loss at the last world. And they say her sponsor's partially to blame. Sponsor? Don't quote me on this, but I think Seda's sponsored by the Sano Princess Hotel. Ellipses? This has suddenly became quite the predicament. The Sano Corporation, the favor of which we've enjoyed since the development fiasco in the Eastern District, is now our opponent. What did the sponsor do? Well, it's just a rumor, but supposedly there were bribes after the last Japan Championship directed at ensuring Sita's spot at the Worlds. A rumor? So there's no evidence? No. But a whole lot of people were wondering, why her? The union claimed it was to give her valuable experience. But the fact of the matter is, many other competitors were better than her. That's enough. Is this scandal still going on? No, not at all. I may be forgetful myself, but it's still shocking how quickly society can forget these things. What's everyone talking about? Cannon chimed into our conversation. We're talking about you, Cannon Chan! Oh? You still pretending to be my coach? Of course! I'm not going to stop until you've grasped the five rings! Come on, this is boring. How can you be bored already? How short is your attention span anyway? About four minutes long. There's plenty enough for me. Four minutes. The duration of the free skate, right? How about this then? You ever had anyone tell you that your jumps are great, but you need to work on your step sequences? All in good time. What the hell? I'll show you a good time. But with the judging system the way that it is, if I have good jumps, then it's fine to make little mistakes in other places. Listen to me! To exaggerate a bit, it's like you can't even do a Hadouken, but you're really good with the Shoruken. Coach Aichi's scolding seems like it'll continue for a long while. 